situation. He would uh, seek a plea deal. He would agree to anything like that. He's just going to say it was a witch hunt. I've been exonerated and plow forward. That may catch up to him this time, though. Yeah, I mean, a lot of lawyers would advise him to take that deal, but he, of course, has shown no inclination uh, to do so. Uh, we have noted time and again his poll numbers are only going up in a Republican primary. That may be a very different story come a general election were he to be the GOP nominee. We should note he, uh, in his Truth Social post last night, he didn't challenge the validity or the authenticity of the tape. He took a different interpretation of it, uh, but didn't say it was it was fake. Um, Charlie Sykes, let's turn to the politics of this. I mean, if you're, let's say, Ron DeSantis, who's appearing in New Hampshire today, just like Trump is, or one of the other candidates, and to this point, your message has been basically to defend Trump on this issue. Yeah. Let's set aside Chris Christie. He's been on the attack. The rest of them have largely defended uh, Trump and criticized Jack Smith instead. But here you have on tape, more or less Donald Trump waving papers around saying, I'm committing a crime right now. Right. Isn't that the moment where it could be an opening for some of these Republicans to change their tune? Well, you would think so, right? But I mean, how many uh, potential off ramps have they had that they passed by? Um, you know, you are hearing the voices like Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson and Will Hurd, who are you know calling uh, calling out uh, Donald Trump and talking about this this indictment. But the other candidates apparently have settled on the strategy of of you know hoping that somehow uh, Donald Trump will implode or, or that Jack Smith will will take care of him. Look, I mean, this would be an, this will be an interesting moment um, if Ron DeSantis actually wants to win this nomination. He's going going to have to eventually go at Donald Trump, but he's going to have to talk about uh, Donald Trump's uh, unfitness for office. So far, he has been unwilling to do that, even though he sort of tiptoed toward it. But I think this is the interesting question. Does this make a difference at all? My sense is probably not, even though this tape is extraordinary. I mean, not only do you have a pr former president of the United States admitting maybe multiple felonies on tape, but he's laughing in a cavalier manner about sharing war plans. You would think on Earth 2.0, where we have a rational political system, that this would be the definitive breaking point. But we've seen this show before. So until Republicans actually decide, wait, you know, this this former president actually you know, was laughing while he was giving away war plans that might have, might have cost or might cost American lives. Um, you have to assume this going to be American lives. <laughs> <laughs> You've been seeing a lot of these uh, segments uh, on corporate media and among Democratic Party media who they cannot possibly understand why their propaganda has not worked, why American people yeah. who are struggling with paying the rent, who are living under uh, authoritarian fascist police state, why we don't care about these fucking classified documents. The Democrats really believe that's going to be the, the needle mover. There's two things that Democrats are doing. Well, I'm like, okay, they don't care if they win. They, For one, they are running on funding Ukraine. So they're doing the same way. They say, well, if we don't win, then the Republicans are going to block Ukraine funding. <laughs> okay. That explains uh... the polls we're about to show you guys. There's some polls <laughs> that explain why this strategy is not working. And, and there's the second thing where... They expect the American people to accept the Democratic premise that this is not weaponized uh, tax on Donald Trump, whether you don't like Donald Trump or not. Uh, according to recent polls, majority of independents see the uh, the investigations in Donald Trump as political. And I'm not saying Donald Trump is an angel. The point is, Don, Joe Biden got caught doing classified documents. And the only argument that Morning Joe and Democrats use to separate the two is, Oh, Joe Biden, he cooperated with the authorities. So, so CJ, if you committed murder, and you, <laughs> you at least cooperated with the <laughs> murder. If, if we parole, you get 50 years. <laughs> so the point is, like, everyone sees both parties as being corrupt. So the Democrats want us to think that Donald Trump is uniquely corrupt, and that's not working. And now that's copium, because now they got to report that their propaganda is not working day in, day out. They, they want people just to focus on Trump's crimes as they got Jim Crow Joe, one of the most corrupt politicians in the modern era, as their leader. As they have King Jeffries as their house leader, literally an unapologetic Zionist Wall Street yeah, puppet. Yeah. But they want us, they want American people to be freaked out about Trump. It's not working. But we're going to get that. So why, go ahead. Go ahead. I think that's why, like, independent media, why they're so afraid of independent media and why so much censorship, because... They're losing the narrative because they're saying that stuff. But then you have people like Joe Rogan, people like Jimmy Dore, 
who are getting more like 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 views than corporate cable news is getting. So when you have these dynamics like us, like Garland Nixon, like like Lee Camp, which we're going to be having on later on this week, um, like Jimmy Dore, like Convo Couch, all these great networks. And I don't want to forget somebody like Ben Norton, Aaron Monte, Max uh, Blumenthal, Blumenthal. When you ha- we have when we're speaking the real narrative to the worker, when we're talking it is and it's opposite of what they're saying. This is why we're seeing the such suppression of us. This is why, Nick, I we played literally a governmental agency talking about COVID, and then they gave us a strike because it's outside of the bounds of their narrative. And they're really um, and Obama speaks about this a lot. Narrative control. Now he doesn't say that, but when he's talking about, yeah, oh, you know, it's too many, it, we gotta get the same facts. He's talking about narrative narrative control because the facts that the government have isn't the real facts, but that's the facts that he's uh that they're speaking that's of. The, so, that's the thought behind our, our name, Revolutionary Blackout Network. We're gonna block out this corporate pro- propaganda. You get number proletariat education, right. debunk like aggressive debunking other propaganda. 